Here I've brought up the schematic for the battery refresher and I'll explain how it works, uh, hopefully briefly. Um, so what we can see is that the, the, the battery to be refreshed is also powering the whole system. That's why you'll see only two leads coming out of the different builds that I've made and this is not what I've made, this is, um, well I found this online so uh, I don't know if it's from the original site or somebody else who built it. But the schematic is the same, okay? So this part only serves to um, have a visual indicator with this LED that the, the system is working. Okay, and whenever the battery is being refreshed, then you have a small, you have a short flash, and you can see that it's working. It's very useful because otherwise you have to hook up the scope and everything. It's a pain in the butt. All right, um, and here's how it works. So we'll concentrate on this this area, and once you understand, all you have to do essentially, this is correctly. Um, uh, drawn in, the base is not connected and the emitter is towards the positive side. And here's how this acts. This acts essentially as a, a large xenodiode and uh, with some hysteresis I think because otherwise it'd be well, a little bit different but nonetheless um, this typically switches at 11.5 uh, to 12 volts typically 11.5 to 11.8 volts so when you connect this the battery is charging this capacitor via this resistor okay and once this capacitor reaches uh, 11.5 for 12 volts depending on the breakdown of this uh, uh, configuration here then this thing becomes conducting and when this conducts it switches on these two transistors now this transistor as I said is only designed or put in to have to activate this LED. This transistor though it's, a, it's more beefy shorts out the battery positive and negative minus the diode drop-off voltage for, for a brief moment until this um, capacitor goes below this breakdown voltage and that's why I said there's a hysteresis because it has to go lower than the actual breakdown voltage for this thing to stop conducting. Okay. Now this has all this has to do with in the um, the PN and NP junctions in in um, silicon transistors, and I'm not going to go into that. I'm not very familiar with the intrinsics. I just know the principles of operation. Okay. So you can replace this schematically with a uh, xenodiode and uh, I don't know if a xenodiode has a, has a breakdown voltage, uh, sorry, has a hysteresis, but uh, it might not work with a xenodiode, but it does work with this, uh, with a transistor, which is interesting. Okay, so that's all you have to do uh, to understand. The other cool thing about this um, schematic, this circuit, is that you cannot run down the battery down to 6 volts or 5 volts, because intrinsically, once this the, the battery voltage goes below the uh, breakdown voltage of this transistor it stops acting it stops functioning so uh, this capacitor will just charge let's say to 10.8 volt or uh, 11.4 but this will break down only at 11.5 okay so all you have is a very small uh, leakage current in this capacitor which is in the probably less than a milliamp um, and uh, so it, it, it will not run down your battery uh, like other circuits may. Okay, so that's, uh, that's why I think this uh, circuit is very cool. And I use this circuit on um, all my batteries that I've finished re uh, rejuvenating. And while uh, I've put in ads to sell the batteries, uh, what I do is I hook up one of these and then they stay fresh. And, uh, you know, I... I I just know that uh, they're not going to uh, sulfate while they're sitting on shelf for a couple of weeks, sometimes a couple of months.